What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Tyrants World of Warcraft. Today we are doing dungeons. As you can see I've been queued in the dungeon finder. We have three DPS, one healer, and one tank. Which is the standard formation for a five man dungeon. And I'm going to show you basically what these different roles do. So today we are doing the Underbog. This is one of my favorite dungeons in the Outlands continent. Lots of really big, scary monsters. You've got a few quests here, as you can see, uh, by the NPCs just kind of standing around. I've already done them in a previous instance. And so now we're trying, I guess, trying to find another DPS because some douchebag quit out. Yeah, that's pretty typical. So now this uh, flying stingray wants to harass my group. So this kind of goes into what I was talking about in one of my earlier videos, the three different types of classes basically in the world of Warcraft. You have your tank, which has an extremely uh, large amount of survivability. He's the one who charges in and just draws all the aggro. That means he gets all the attention of all the enemies. They're all beating the hell out of him and not in a good way. You've got the healer that keeps everyone alive during this whole thing, and then you've got the three DPS people, which means damage per second. That means these are the people who are basically killing everything. So while the tank has the aggro, me and the other two DPSers, I guess that's the best way to put it, are basically mowing these guys down as best we can. As you can see, I just used a, what they call an area of effect attack, which is called AOE for short. Which means you can attack multiple mobs at one time. AOE attacks do less damage on individual mobs, but again, attack multiple mobs at once, as opposed to single attacks, which do greater damage to individual mobs or NPCs, depending on how you look at it. So. While the tank is gathering the groups of enemies together, I'm going to help mow them down with my AoE attack as I suspect my other two DPS buddies here are doing the same thing. My Felguard, which is a pet in World of Warcraft for uh, Warlocks, uh, basically serves as your own personal tank when you spec into the Demonology Talent Tree is also adding a little bit of DPS. So we've got a couple of really big monsters there. Again, the tank is doing a really good job by just getting them all together. The healer is keeping the tank alive, and the DPS is just mowing them down. And this is the basic formula for all of your five-man instances. And this does basically transfer into raids at the end game, which are 10 to 25-man instances, which means you are playing with 10 to 25 players. One of the really cool things about uh, the World of Warcraft is that you're basically in a actual living, breathing world with a lot of different people. It's pretty cool being able to play. It's like multiplayer, pretty much. So if you're a Halo fan and you're a big fan of multiplayer, this is a really cool element to an RPG is that you're just playing with a lot of different people from all over the world. It's pretty cool. So the priest right there is the healer, and he's casting all sorts of spells to keep that tank alive. That tank looks like a death knight from what I can tell. There are only three classes in the World of Warcraft that can wear plate armor, which is the most, or I should say the strongest armor in the game, and that's death knights, paladins, and warriors. And these three classes, you know, they can spec in other things, but they are designed to be tanks. Um, all classes can be specced to DPS, depending on the talent tree, but basically you serve a particular niche. You have a strong point and you stick with it. So paladins, again, they can be healers, they can be DPS, uh, just like death knights and warriors can be DPS, but they serve tanks better because they are the only classes that can wear plate armor and have just an insane amount of health compared to other classes such as mine which wears cloth. Cloth being the weakest kind of armor. Warlocks and mages are pretty much glass cannons. They deal a heavy amount of damage but they're very weak. 
He's just kind of standing there. Come on, fall over. Oh. Yay, Pepto-Bismol. Okay, so now we're going to make our way up this uh, little ramp here. And this is how basically most of your five-man dungeons play out. Now, all of these mobs are what you call elites. And I know I've been over this before. Elite mobs are like regular mobs, but they have basically double the health and hit twice as hard. So they're very difficult for one person to kill. But for five people going up against them, that definitely helps a lot. Particularly if you have a healer that's keeping you alive. You've got a tank that's holding the aggro of all of the enemies. And that basically allows your DPS people to mow them down with their attacks. And our healer just jumped off. And everyone's jumping off. Why is everyone jumping off? Ah, getting the quest objective, I see. Alright, well, I've already done this quest, so I'm not really that concerned about it. But I will help these guys out because this is definitely a group effort. And I don't want to be the odd man out. Trust me, I already stick out enough in the crowd. Don't need to push the uh, envelope any more than I already do. And now this mob is attacking me because apparently I'm dealing so much damage that I'm actually pulling away from the tank. And that can be a problem if the tank cannot hold aggro properly. If you were dealing too much damage, you can draw the mobs towards you, which can be a big issue. Now, typically, if your tank is a really good tank, this will not be a problem. But if your tank is lacking in any way, shape, or form... You definitely want to compensate by doing less damage. I know it sounds a little bit cheesy. Um, you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to just unleash your powers at your will. But it doesn't always play out that way, unfortunately. You know, right now I'm leveling a Death Knight as well to try and learn how to tank. So if this guy's learning how to tank too, I can basically live with that. So this is our first boss here. It's the big green guy who is sniffing his armpits he's definitely a man that's definitely a guy have it right there he's got his two minions right here called bog giants and they are pretty damn big and they're very purple uh based on the way they're kind of uh, interloping with each other right now i'd say they have a thing going on yeah they're definitely humping so let's take these guys out really quick. Now because there's only two guys here, I'm not going to use an area of effect attack. I'm just going to use my dots, which are of course, as I've said before, damage over time spells. As opposed to burst abilities, which, you know, give you big numbers, as you can see. Um, basically damage, and he's sniffing his armpits again. Uh, damage over time spells, uh, leech life slowly but if you get a lot of damage over time spells on the mob in question in this case the boss then they drain life really really quickly so like you can dot up your subject and then run and hide and they're still taking damage so you don't have to engage them directly anymore which is pretty damn awesome and of course on top of that you've got your pet in this case felguard to help keep the attention off of you. And this guy's called Hungerfen. I think he's a quest objective. Four people. I definitely need this. This is a blue. It's better than any of the items I currently have, I believe. So we're just going to double check. Yeah. Now, this is called rolling. And if you need the item, the dice uh, will light up, which basically means need. Um, and you're almost guaranteed it unless someone else needs it as well. The coins mean greed. So it means you don't need it, but you still have the option to get it. It is a random roll. Uh, so if everyone selects greed, then whoever gets the highest number, which is between 1 and, or I think 0 and 99, or 1 and 99, um... Whoever gets the highest number gets the item, so it's completely random. It's like a little mini lottery. And apparently one of our guys died, so one of our guys resurrected him. Um, I completely forgot that in Cataclysm, Warlocks also have the ability to resurrect other players that have died so that they do not have to manually travel back to the instance. That can be a pain in the butt, particularly with Dungeon Finder, because if you get into a dungeon with dungeon finder you are automatically teleported 
to the dungeon with the other players. This prevents you from having to find the dungeon manually. The downside of this is if you don't know where the dungeon is, it can be kind of a problem getting back there uh, if you die and no one is willing to resurrect you. Uh, fortunately, it doesn't look like I have a bunch of douchebags here, so I'll probably, if I die, be able to be resurrected. But again, a group that can coordinate effectively won't have to worry about death very much. If the tank does his job and the healer does his or her job, then you really shouldn't have to worry too much. So now we're moving forward yet again. First boss down. We're moving towards the second one. Things should be getting a little bit more heated here. There are more bog giants lingering around. These are big hunchback looking things. Um, if you saw my video, The Road to Nagrin, you probably saw some of these lesser versions walking around in Zenger Marsh. Now we are actually fighting them. But these are, again, elites, so they're much tougher to kill. You typically need help to do this. Um, even with five people, this guy is taking quite a while to go down. There we go. That's our mage right there. It looks like he specced fire, which actually isn't that great for this level. If he's a level 64 or higher, he really should go for arcane. But it really does depend on how you want to play. Uh, don't necessarily go what the majority wants you to level as. Um, I did a little bit of research when with my mage. I leveled as Frost, which has a lot of survivability, and then switched to Arcane at level 64 once I got the ability to cast Arcane Blast, which was a major game changer. You can basically one or two shot enemies. It's huge. So you basically kill enemies before they can even get to you. And that's pretty awesome. So now we're moving up again, killing these serpent type things. Uh, the first time I saw these guys was in Ashenvale. Uh, they may have been in Dark... No, I'm going to take that back. They may have been in Darkshore too. It's uh, a very low level uh, territory when you're leveling. And now we're waiting for... Uh, what am I doing? Alright, so everyone's charging in again. Okay, so screw this. Run back in. Now, because he has gathered more, three or more mobs, that's when you typically use your area of effect attack. What I'm using right now uh, is like a firestorm type uh, move. very effective. Uh, the mage is clearly using uh, his uh, blizzard ability. No ego there, blizzard. Um, so this mob is trying to run away, so I'm just going to dot him up with some curses so that he can't really do much. Suck the life out of him. Again, just like my ex-girlfriend. And now we're just going to finish off these other guys because they're very spread out, so an area of effect attack is not going to work. My Felguard is just hacking the hell out of these things. Tank is already aggroing more mobs before we even finish that fight, so this guy is on fire today. Now, a good tank tends to keep the mobs in one spot. He actually moved them slightly out of my area of effect attack. Fortunately, not completely, so it was still affecting the bad guys here, but... You know, again, you want to try to keep the bad guys in one spot so that your DPS can AoE all of them down as efficiently as possible. It looks like we all have our companion pets out today. Um, I've got my little core hound. He's annoying as shit, but uh, it works for now. It kind of goes with the whole warlock thing. And I can kind of see over there to the right the next boss he slowly travels up the ramp um and then we end up fighting him in just a couple of minutes i've actually run this dungeon many times this is my third uh character that i've leveled at this point my first was a hunter 
Uh, loved leveling him, but did not like the end game with him. And then, so I started leveling a mage. Those are the real glass cannons. Probably, arguably, the highest DPS uh, dealers in the game. Love that guy. He is my main. He is a level 85. And he just definitely fucked shit up. Oh, by the way, uh, viewer discretion is advised. Am I too late for that? So, again, this is right before the second boss. We're just killing the enemies that are just guarding him, I guess. The second boss is slowly making his way up the ramp. This is a three-headed dragon. If you were a fan of Godzilla, it kind of reminds me of Ghidra, uh, the three-headed alien monster from Planet X. Come on, I know you sci-fi lovers know that monster. Come on. These guys are getting mowed down again pretty easily. The tank's doing a great job. I'm using uh, Drain Soul to get all of my soul shards back. Those are the three pink diamonds below my health and mana on the top left-hand corner of the screen. It is, again, unique to Warlocks. And there's the three-headed monster. He's emerging now. That is the second boss. There are three bosses in this particular... Uh, dungeon or instance depending on how you like to call it uh, and a little mini boss as well now typically you want to wait till he gets to the platform our tank got a little bit of ants in his pants uh, he took that Viagra just a little bit early so now he's going straight for the boss not a problem though again it really doesn't matter where you kill this guy as long as your team is ready now, Dungeon Finder is also a great way to level a little bit faster. The elites, the elite mobs in these things are worth a lot more points than the standard ones that you kill uh, while you're questing. Now, if you like to quest, um, then I definitely recommend doing that instead. But this is a great way to not be stuck in one territory or zone for too long. This is the platform where we are supposed to be fighting the monster, but we already killed him, which is pretty cool. It means we're working together pretty well, so we just jump off here, a little bit suicidal. We have a bunch of emo people here. It's so now we need to swim up here on this ledge and jump down, and I'm going to get hurt. Yeah, that was 2,000 health. But as you level, you get more health, you get more mana. That wasn't that big of a deal, and if your healer is on top of things, again, it's not going to matter. Now, it looks like our mage is just kind of doing nothing right now. I pretty much didn't seem like he knew what he was doing anyway, so I'm not really that concerned about it. Let's see. Yeah, he's, he's not joining the group. You always want to stick with your group when you're doing one of these things. Again, it is a group effort. It's not that bad when a DPS decides to uh, pan out, but your tank and your healer are basically what keep the group going. Yeah, I don't think he's coming back. Alright, so let's get back into the game. We'll, we'll help these guys out. Um, maybe we'll be able to kick him in a second. Um, if someone's causing a lot of issues in your uh, particular dungeon or your group instance, you have the option to kick them. Uh, it is a vote, which means that everyone in your group has to agree to it. Now check this out. We're going to see if we can vote to kick. We can't do it in combat, which sucks, or shortly after combat, which also sucks because the tank is just going for it. He isn't stopping for anything. And now I can't be kicked for another three minutes. I don't know why that is in particular, but maybe he'll back out. I don't know. It looks like 
Well, it looks like he just uh, quit. I can't cast that yet. His uh, bar over there on the left-hand side is faded, which means he's no longer actually a part of the instance. It means he's signed out of the World of Warcraft. How dare you! Make love, not Warcraft, damn it! Now we're fighting a bunch of wasp things. I don't know what, what this is. Again, part of the Underbog. This is actually located in Zanger Marsh. If you saw my Road to Nagrin video, that's the place with the giant mushrooms. The drug lord's dream. So, I will say that even though I do not like Zanger Marsh as a whole, the instances are actually pretty entertaining. A lot of cool stuff happening here. I don't know what it is about it. So, we were able to finally kick the other guy. Got a new one in. He is a Night Elf Hunter. That was actually my first uh, character that I leveled, a Night Elf Hunter. Hunters are pretty cool because you can tame animals in the wild, just about anything. And they will fight by your side. It's like your loyal dog. Your loyal bitch. There we go. So we're going to just keep culling our way through. We're already two bosses down. We're almost completely through this uh, instance. It's not a very long instance, which I like. Um... Dungeons that are longer than 30 minutes are kind of uh, boring to me. That's why I don't raid at top level because it's just, you know, anything longer than 30 minutes really just isn't worth it. You know, you're just spamming the same buttons forever. But 30 minutes is about right. You, you know, you fight a few bosses, get a few mobs in there, get a lot of XP, and you level a lot quicker. Of course, when you raid, it level cap you aren't worried about leveling you're trying to get better gear which makes you more powerful okay so he's looking at this mini boss over here it's not an actual boss but he's pretty tough and I can't pronounce his name Musilek alright I swear I think blizzards on ecstasy when they think of these names either that or they just like to plagiarize because half the names in here are spin-offs of other things either from Lord of the Rings or other bits of lore, as you've seen in my other videos, and he froze me. Son of a bitch! Knock it off! Um, uh, there was a bit from CSI. Of course, there's the Ernest Hemingway quests, uh, being the Nessing Wary. Yeah, really couldn't tell what you were going for there, but... But it's cool because you can kind of uh, reference these things with things you can kind of in real life. So we're going to go for greed here. I don't really need that particular item. But if you get it, that means that you can sell it later or disenchant it. Uh, I won't go into disenchanting in this one. And damn, I'm frozen again. And the asshole's bear is attacking everyone. And that hunter has a green tiger as a pet. I've never seen one of those before. I think Siegfried and Roy would be jealous right about now. His name is Claw. How original. Okay, I don't really need this. I've got a magic wand, so... Screw that. And now we'll move forward towards the final boss. The real boss. And we've got a couple more mobs to kill here. I'm guessing a couple of bog giants. Oh, I'm sorry. Underbog Lord. I did not mean to undercut you, Lord, sir. Thing. Looks just like the... Uh, Underbog Giants, but it's bigger and it's green. Kind of like the second boss. It's kind of amazing. These things are so big, but they're not bosses. They're just regular elite mobs. So we should have a clear path to the boss at this point. I'm seeing a lot of dead things here. That's probably not good. Huh. So where is this guy? Oh, and oh my god, it's the tripod from War of the Worlds. Oh, crap. Oh, thank god we don't have our kids here. So, I summon my Doom Guard. That adds a lot of extra DPS and shoots some really powerful Shadow Bolts. Lasts for about a minute. 
If you spec into it in demonology, he lasts for 1.8 minutes. I don't know what that is. But he's definitely going down a lot faster. And he is down for the count. And that is the underbog. And that's a dagger. Don't really need it. So I'll hit OK for greed. If anyone needs it, they can take it. And that is the underbog. If you have any quests to turn in, just jump off that little ledge over there and you can go from there. Be sure to thank your group. That is basic dungeons. Again, tanks, DPS, and health. Your three basic classes. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'm the Tyrant. Signing out.